All right, all right. Hello, everyone, and now welcome. Welcome to a match between Soin and Foggy. This game taking place here on Northern Isle. All right, over here on... Well, I'm going to go ahead and swap the colors. Um, so Soin is going to be blue on the bottom left-hand side of the map. Um, very happy to see that the colors are matching with who I need to actually be watching just in case there is any sort of invisible units on the map. If they are shadow melted, well, I apologize. They are very difficult to spot anyways. And well, they're not moving, so they shouldn't have that big of an impact on the game, um, on the mini map if I can't see them. Anyways, Seduce Panda, good morning. How are you doing today? Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this 1v1 matchup between Foggy and Soin. What are we looking for in this 1v1 matchup? Well, Nitel versus Orc is perhaps one of the matchups that was changed the most. Um, well, just from overall overall balance changes, it is no longer necessarily Druid of the Talons. Huntresses have become popular. Keeper of the Grove has become popular. And I really feel like uh, it's going to take a little bit of time for the meta to really get back to a place where we can always predict what people are doing. And, and that's good. I, I actually hope that the meta doesn't really flesh out to where we are always seeing the same strategies over and over again. Huntresses with uh, uh, Peep of the Grove with Huntresses is common. Druids of the Talon are still common, but it's no longer the 97% the um, of the matches that you see in the matchup here. Are we going to be looking at perhaps raiders as well? You know, double bestiary or a bestiary and spirit walkers training the torrent totem to be able to um, dispel. And there's much more of a reactive play now coming in from the orc too. So far, we are going to be looking at a blade master making its way out. Meanwhile, Keeper of the Grove already on its way down. Going to go ahead and clear out um, a 5-4-4 creep camp, and which will give level 2 to that Keeper of the Grove. That Keeper of the Grove, or well, this Ancient of War, taking a lot more damage than is necessary early on. But then, well, then again, any damage is unnecessary. But I guess at the same time, in the same way, it's nice that you can actually trade some of these trees off over here and a little bit of gold to just get to level two and not actually sacrifice any units back down here we're going to see the blade master finish off that last ice roll picks up a ring of protection plus three effectively giving him what is that six uh, 18 percent more effective hit points and well 18 percent more effective hit points um translates roughly to about what 70 or 80 80 to 90 no actually no yeah about 80 to 90 um hit points right there as we're going to see the flesh eater now getting taken down all right blade master going to go ahead and continue to finish off these huntsmen meanwhile back across here keeper of the grove still wandering around on the far side is he going to be able to find some easy units to entangle and that's what the keeper of the grove is good for in these early early stages if a grunt is caught out of position oh what is this Ancient, uh, ancient protector being built by Foggy off over here. And well, if you take a look at Fog of War, you have no idea this is going on, even though it is relatively close. That line of sight is incredibly important. Um, being able to catch things just like that. Um, Meanwhile, let's take a look back off to the North here. Blade Master going to say, oh, wow, you know, my opponent has yet to creep out his own Ogre Warrior creep camp. This is a little bit odd. What is going on? As Foggy is actually off on the other side of the map, clearing out his opponent's creep camps as an Ancient Protector is now nearing completion. Now, once that Ancient Protector is nearing completion, I believe it will root itself right here and then try to attack the Burrow. The problem is going to be that the well, does the Ancient Protector actually have a farther range of 700 range there as we're going to see the keeper of the grove oh going after a grunt one shot two shot one more shot right there should be able to finish it off uh, oh yep there it goes as the keeper of the grove now making its way back down ha hey it's been the best it's the best warcraft three shot caster for the last 10 years streaming yep um, 
thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Is the Keeper of the Grove not going to go ahead and engage against the Blade Master? There is an illusion right now causing, causing in some problems as the Ancient Protector is actually going to be walking inside behind the lines here. That is absolutely hilarious. Keeper of the Grove now looking to back away. Huntresses are all right there. And the, the, the positioning that this guy is going to take is not going to be able to spot very much of anything at all. This is actually very strange. The grunts actually suspect anything. Oh, the trees are starting to move and Foggy has to see that those trees are shaking. And it is going to go ahead and it root right there. And what is he going to do? Is he going to... Oh, there he goes. And the peons are now absolutely running out. All right, Blade Master is in position here. He is just trying to eat his way through. And well, this actually has a very... Has, an, has the adverse effect of, um, well, making lumber harvesting a little bit more difficult. That will get taken down very fast. It's not going to have the payoff nearly as much as I thought it was going to. But what you do end up having is this giant, giant hole inside your base now. Normally, the peons do a very good job of making sure that... Um, well, you do not actually expose these workers. There is now an easy way in and out of, along the backside here. Also, a lot more trees were eaten or and, and were eaten and cut down, so to speak. So it is going to make it much more difficult to try and actually clear out or, or get much more lumber. We'll see if that actually has an impact on the game if there's ever any a lumber shortage later on. Coming back through Shadow Hunter, going to go ahead and clean up the Tuscar Trappers, picking up a wand of mana stealing. And with these, well, Serpent Wards, we know that the uh, we know that the Shadow Hunter is going to be incredibly powerful as it levels up. These Huntresses and all of that unarmored, um, unarmored units coming in from the Night Elf Armory takes a lot of piercing damage. And then, well, the amount of piercing damage, what, up to 50 piercing damage per attack at level 5, doubling that and is just really, really effective there. All right, Sentinels are now down. Blade Master is still trying to run back. We're going to take a look at the armies trying to make their way over as we are also getting up a Tree of Life and an Ancient of War. Now, is the Blade Master a actually able to shut that down? It looks like it will be able to do that as Foggy now retreats all the way back. That's an interesting thing with taking out the trees. That that uh, yeah, I have not seen that before. I'm trying to take out the trees, whether or not it actually has an impact on the game, uh, but... It is going to be mentally within Soen's mind that his normally well-protected base now has this back door, so to speak, eaten way. Now, this Blade Master, what is it doing? Blade Master is trying to take down this 430 hit point thing right there. It is going to try to stutter step away. The Keeper of the Grove is not nearby. And while well, the Blade Master may just end up taking a lot of damage here, Huntress is now trying to get away. Blade Master down to 132. And Soen realizes that it cannot stick around. The Tree of Life is right there. There is that Owl Sentry Scout preventing any additional attacks. Meanwhile, a lot of Ents are now out onto the battlefield. Shamans without the ability to purge not enough mana as the unit is going to be forced to try and retreat once more. Blade Master in the center portion of the map picked up a scroll of healing. Meanwhile, oh, taking on those Fulborgs as the Shadow Hunter tries to get to level 3. Alright, gonna try and engage once more. Triple, triple Serpent Wards all right next to each other. Very difficult to um, take them down one at a time as we are looking at more Ents now joining in on the fight again. Alright, Serpent Wards are getting in some free damage all over the place. Meanwhile, the Fulborg Tracker, if you just take down this one unit, that actually may be worth it to try and take it down and get Get the experience. Meanwhile, Blade Master has already healed back up as the Owl Scout is in the skies, well, making sure that that Blade Master doesn't do any surprise tricks. All right, level three now on the Shadow Hunter, currently down. Level two Serpent Wards down, 27 to 30 damage, piercing as the Tracker will fall here. Blade Master, well, just shy of level three. Now, Shadow Hunter is at three. Blade Master is at two. Keeper of the Grove now retreating back. Foggy has his expansion up. We do see dual Ancients of War. One Ancient of War off over here as we are now transitioning into Archers. The Archer switch, a little bit curious right now, transitioning into Archers um, that will drop the effectiveness of the of the um, Serpent Ward since Archers have medium armor. But on top of that, the Archers actually have less hit points. And I, I think through the math, though, the Huntresses actually end up getting killed faster um, because of how the armor works. But well, I'll have to keep a closer lookout on that as, oh, what's this, an illusionary beast or... Um, 
Well, Goblin Alchemist now going to try to shift away. Serpent Wards are now down. There's another Alchemist right there. More repairs are getting through here. Blade Master, there's a purge onto that Archer. Archer getting caught out of position as the Shamans are basically using purge like in Snare. So purge like in Snare to um, will just stop any unsuspecting unit as a Huntress. You can see how much damage it is taking and well, almost taken down right there. Serpent Wards dealing so much damage. That range feeling so far. 600 damage as the repairs are now underway. There there's a quick roar. Yuna's trying to get back the other side. There it goes. Well, one Huntress, two Huntresses already quickly taken down. And you can see how fast those units are just absolutely getting pelted. Lightning Shield quickly getting dispelled. Um, as we're looking at another Lightning Shield coming down again, more damage onto an Illusion. So that is no hair off of Sowin's back coming across and dealing all of that damage there. Grunts now trying to retreat back. There goes one hit, low hit point Grunt retreating back. Serpent Wards pretty much finished off every single Huntress already as it is now turning into an army of archers. Grunt still pushing their way through and the archers are just going to try and shuffle themselves into a corner and then fire under the cover of a bunch of trees and to get in all of that damage. However, it is not going to be able to protect the Ancient of War or that Tree of Life as well another Grunt could get taken down. There it goes as that damage is getting added up. The downside of, mi of missile projectiles doing damage to grunts is that oftentimes archers will fire at a unit that is already going to be dead. That is some of the one of the differences, say, between riflemen and archers. If you do a large volley um, and, and they are staggered coming in from the archers, a rifleman will, it will be able to shoot a target, kill it, and then the other riflemen will already know to be looking for another target. The archer, as that arrow is flying towards its target, its attack was used, and even if the grunt falls, well, that is just damage lost. Hey, Metaphysics. Hey, Flynn. Thank you all for joining in. Blade Master now making its way back over here to the bottom left. We have ring of, rings of protection on that Blade Master, getting close to 14 armor. Very big damage reduction indeed. But he, well, he decided to quickly sell all or not sell all of those, give those to the Shadow Hunter since the Shadow Hunter will. Um, I guess if your healer has a whole bunch of armor, he, he is much more difficult to take out alongside the rest of the army. Classic Warcraft strategy, protect your healers and your army and, well, your party will live. All right, Alchemist still moving back around here. A large archer contingency making its way down. Meanwhile, we're looking at Tree of Ages and we still haven't seen any Ancients of Lore. Foggy going for this mass almost tier one strategy. He does have one one upgrades. I don't see the upgrades for tier two yet. But the only thing that he has access to from tier two right now is this alchemist. Blade Master is down across over here as the archers while well, taking a little bit of damage once more. There's a purge. Archer gonna get taken down. There goes one. Oh nope, Staff of Preservation saves the Huntress and leaves the Archer behind. That's gotta be a horrible feeling. You are on your last breath, you are about to die. And you see the Keeper of the Grove running towards you with the Staff of Preservation. And you think to yourself, I'm going to be saved. Only to, to see the, the full hit point Huntress teleport away from you. And that is your dying view. All right. Blade Master with double lightning shield and mirror images diving on in. So Sobin using mirror images very effectively. Da damage is being dealt here. And this is kind of funny that you're actually forced to try and fight against these mirror images. Blade Master is still um, causing a lot of problem here, finishing off more units again um, as the Blade Master now making its way back out. Serpent Wards continuing to well, cause problem for Huntresses. Ents now making their way through. And what is Foggy going to be doing with this, well, overall economic advantage? He has 600 more gold than his opponent, but that's the only real advantage that we see so far. Um, both sides sitting at 50-50 supply. We may see a sudden increase in the, uh, the army size of Foggy, but we'll have to take a keep uh, or keep a good lookout on that, especially as Sowin is also setting up an expansion of his own.
coming back through we are at stronghold not going to fortress burrows have fortified armor as we are getting into steel melee weapon upgrades and for the grunts who are already o2 upgraded now all right serpent wards are down uh, are we gonna see a very very dead huntress yes we are another huntress gonna get taken down very well nope staff of preservation i guess are reserved for huntresses and huntresses only as the archers will have a lesson to learn there Huntress is now making their way back through Alchemist, a Keeper of the Grove, making well making their rounds again. Blade Master and Shadow Hunter wanting a little bit more experience, getting to five five, incredibly important, and um, to clear up some of these arachnids. Back across over here, Keeper of the Grove making its way off to the north as well, as some of these Nerubian web spinners and uh, uh, overall arachnids will fall, giving some hopefully decent items. Blade Master, wow. Currently at 14 armor with the pure up to vitality, almost has a thousand hit points. Shadow Hunter has given all of those rings of protection back to the Blade Master. Uh, I guess protection items on your, the main unit that's going to be taking damage is also a very good idea. Keeper of the Grove sitting at four cloak of flames on a goblin alchemist. Well, standing close to the alchemist is going to be hazardous to your health as we're looking at, um, well, more just creeping going on right now. If you staff Huntress, you technically staff two units because Huntress dies on a black. Okay, that, that is that is technically true. All right. With a Kodo, you might staff three. Oh, that. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Did not think of that. All right. Um, but then again, you'd have to have a staff of preservation or a staff of sanctuary in the hands or of uh, of an orc army or well yeah anyways let's go ahead and break these things down here goblin alchemist quickly gets an acid bomb in here serpent war is going to go ahead and be dropping damage there was uh, some detonations actually removing the scroll of protection from their own units here as the grunts are now trying to fight cloak of flames on that alchemist in that front line right there saying you know what i can do my best impersonation of lightning shield as well blade master in the back those mirror images will forcing detonations as the cloak of flames in the front alchemist still causing a bunch of healing spray and well keeping those units alive low hit point huntress looks like it will get stabbed back out again as we are still fighting our way through the shaman are in the back they are offering plenty of protection lightning shield onto some of the units only quickly to get dispelled once more as the low hit point grunts should not be trying to retreat mirror image still causing major problems and so in um so in is basically making his opponent foggy see double and even triple and he cannot ignore them the blade master's mirror image is actually dealing um, a lot of damage across multiple units forcing the keeper of the grove uh, to use much more healing sprays and get scrolls of healing as well all right grunts trying to get away down to 25 hit points scroll of speed is it going to be able to outrun there is one grunt in the back perhaps not going to be able to get the job done as the blade master in a massive retreat as well i see rod of necromancy regularly on farseers all right some crazy happiness all going around as we're looking at healing salves and going down here so far i am surprised about the type of units that we're still looking at we are still getting only tier one grunts right now and shaman um it doesn't look like there's a lot of diversity coming in either from Sowin or foggy's army huntresses and archers going up against grunts and shamans only and well, it doesn't look like any anyone really wants to deviate from that particular strategy. Huntresses finally have two one upgrades, getting in a little bit more damage. Orc burrows don't have anyone inside. That does come as a surprise, as we're looking at the serpent wards now being dropped down. Voodoo lounge quickly taken down there. Shadow hunter in the back, not doing anything. You cannot allow your main heroes in the back not to be participating on the fight as they do have big damage, especially with that devotion aura on that unit there. Lightning shield causing problems, archers, and just constantly trying to be forced to move all of your units in order to keep them alive. You can see that damage is starting to add up and, and forcing that alchemist to continue to do more. All right, Blade Master trying to go after the Keeper of the Grove. However, a potion of invulnerability has been used. More damage coming across. Level five now on that Keeper of the Grove. Serpent Wars could try to go after more Huntresses again as the Ents are coming in through the forest, but a couple of rocks blocking their path all right blade master going to try and engage low hit point grunts could try it could get taken down no they do not fall shadow hunter gets to level five as the blade master stays at four shadow hunter going to quickly go to a voodoo lounge off over here get some clarity potions and some potions of mana meanwhile orc burrows not 
um, no one is in them either. And this shaman, where is he going to try and go? Um, yeah, trying to get any lumber at this point, probably not necessary, as a lot of damage to the orc burrows are going to prevent any sort of, well, retreat or any sort of rebuilding of the army for Soen. Any unit lost here is an actual unit gone for quite some time. All right, Alchemist trying to s switch all the way back here. Healing Spray going to keep him alive a little while longer. Blade Master, uh, well, going to go ahead and try and stay alive as the Staff of Preservation saves that Alchemist. All right, Keeper of the Grove gets an entangle off on that Blade Master. Blade Master, however, doesn't have all of the great, great, well, our, um, items there. Gets a healing wave and then drops uh, drops the Pure Up of Vitality, gets the healing wave, and then picks it back up. As we're going to look at this one Huntress, perhaps get taken down. Are we going to see a purge there? The Huntress is still trying to shake off the last remaining effects of that lightning. One more shot. There it goes. Blade Master now at five. Okay. Uh, there's no info on Liquipedia because Liquipedia has a $50 limit and we only paid 12 Oh, okay. All right, let's go ahead and continue to fight battle it through Blade Master, going after all of these units once again. Alchemist sitting at level three, Keeper of the Grove. Alchemist rejoining in double, well, Lightning Shield back on those mirror images, still causing problems. Meanwhile, level three critical strike, as the Wisp are forcing, forcing the constantly being detonated to try and stop this mirror image Lightning Shield army. Shamans are still off over here as well, as well. Mana a little bit low on many of them, as the Witch Doctor is now placing down serpent wards all across the map. Foggy having a major supply advantage, 20 supply over his opponent, but we do see that there is a thousand gold in the bank, and um, currently so in is only supply blocked. Um, still fighting their way through. Archer is going to be able to finish off many of those units. Grunts are going to try to get in position. Blade Master going to continue to battle it um, again. As you can see, the well Alchemist in the back healing up all of those units once more. All right, one Huntress um, really get joining and getting very far in this fight here as the remaining Huntresses finally show up to the party. You can see the Serpent Wars dealing so much damage. Uh, every attack it deals 60 damage right there. The armor af offering a little bit of protection. All right, Xander. All right, let's see. Where are the rest of the units going to be? Foggy has set up this expansion in the corner already. It's been mining for about a minute and a half to two minutes. And but what is Foggy really doing with all of this extra gold? That's often been um, often been a critique of Moon. Moon has all of these expansions, but somehow Moon, with the economic advantage, still always gets away with with, with so many wins. In this situation, Foggy is expanding like his mentor moon oh lightning shield now being brought down multiple lightning shields massive detonations will need to be brought over as well as damage is getting added in all over the place blade master oh beautiful staff of preservation saving but the keeper of the grove is now low, no longer in the fight are we going to see a whole bunch of dead archers in the back right there scroll of healing counteracting again healing spray coming back over still as more damage heading through archers trying to poke down some of these shaman huntresses joining in blade master sitting at level five continuing to battle it out and who is actually going to win out on this fight as the grunts uh, becoming pin cushions all right stasis trap is now down is that actually going to get focused down by foggy um, that is the big question because if all of that all of those units end up getting stunned oh there it goes it does get focused down as the huntresses are now taken down all right shamans getting absolutely pelted to death and trying to join in on the fight the archers with 18 to 24 damage um well looking very strong there All right, sorry. Like first time I'm hearing my left speaker in a little bit of time, and it just completely confused me. I thought my girls were up and like listening to Warcraft music, and I'm like, that that is strange. All right, Blade Master now making its way back down here. We are still seeing two um, two base Soen. Soen purposely staying in well no upkeep for a little bit of time to get maximum gold. Finally getting back into um, low upkeep. Meanwhile. And coming back across, we are getting into Stronghold, upgrading the Fortress finally. And I take it back, the main bases have now been mined out. Uh, my apologies, cannot tell. Minimap shows that the gold mine is still there. All right. Coming back through gold mines, we have about nine minutes of mining left. There is still another gold mine for Soin to try and establish. Is Foggy uh, perhaps just going to continue to mine and have the most amount of most units onto the field, but unable to close and seal the deal? 
level five on the keeper of the grove level five on the alchemist once tranquility is out well the shadow hunter may actually want to retrain and try and get um well try and get hex to stop that tranquility he probably has level two healing wave and level three serpent wards as that serpent ward is going to be offering a little bit of protection right there as and well what's going to be going down sentry wards and well the map hacking ability of all of those troll witch doctors really not working out all that well any longer as the blade master going to try and engage all right here you go army of wisps in the back they need to get past the front line here healing spray from that alchemist and so many healing items from foggy and that's where he's spending all of his gold all right serpent wards are down scroll of protection right there not quite sure why foggy didn't upgrade the armor on all of those huntresses as he's been spending a lot of gold on scroll of protection instead mass detonation and all of the shamans and all of the witch doctors and the heroes losing much of their mana shadow hunter sitting at level six but big bad voodoo is not necessarily that great of an ability as the priestess of the moon arrives to the party saying hello everyone i bring you true shot aura all right the entire army now getting a 10 percent damage bonus as well as the units are now making their way back out and there's a sudden power spike in the overall effectiveness but it looks like Soen has the supply lead at this stage especially as other grunts or other huntresses are getting taken down low hit point grunt oh finally gets shot a final arrow in the back as he was trying to run away oh why do people not know you have to run in a zigzag to dodge arrows Kodo Beast now making its way back down. Kodo unable to eat anything there at all. Shadow Hunter, well, picking up some additional uh, additional items. Yes, would you mind keeping it PG-13? Uh, I don't, I have no idea what the chat was doing right there. So two into the game. Blade Master now making its way back off to the north here. Blade Master needs to heal up again. Prayer up of Vitality, Healing Wave drop and, uh, dropped and picked back up. Meanwhile, well trying to position your sentry wards in places where there, it is not close enough to other trees. Back across over here, there is a lone wisp. Soggy, foggy seen at 58 supply compared to 50. Level 2 uh, mirror image actually being useful. I, yeah, I, it, it has been a very, very strange time to actually see mirror image finally be used in high level play after, after what I would say 12, 13, or... 15 years i mean early on mirror image was better just because wind walk was wind walk did not allow you to actually pass through units so it wasn't that escape card that so that you want and need so much okay great hall currently con being constructed peons going to stay purposely close by as the shadow hunter is at six six the medallion of courage strength and intelligence on that shadow hunter there now up to 540 mana stasis traps being <clears throat> strategically placed all around the map huntress is right there let's see there's going to be an engagement and that's oh not going to get pelted down in time as it does go ahead and become invisible all right throwing up a owl sentry is going to be important to not walk into that trap so to speak as the blade master is still wandering around all right coming back through Coming back through Stasis Trap, finally landing down Blade Master. Is it going to get off that Blade Storm right there? There it is. Blade Storm along the backside. So much damage. Uh, you can see Healing Spray trying to counteract all of that damage right there. But a lot of damage still done. Blade Storm, however, coming to an end. And now the Blade Master, low on mana, no way to escape out. And he is in trouble. No Staff of Preservation. And a Blade Storm, one Blade Storm cast counteracted by a surround and all of a sudden Soin loses a level six blade master units now trying to retreat back once more foggy um well f f smelling blood blade master blood on the walls chasing after all of those units and those units are now trying to retreat back again shaman do, do have bloodlust they have that mastery training but losing a level six blade master at this point and stage in the game and this could end up costing the expansion as well all right damage getting added through huntresses still only at two one upgrades level three upgrades not getting added in at all archer getting caught in transit shadow hunter most likely gonna resurrect the blade master at the tavern 
and a blade master just wondering what the shadow hunter was doing um, well, like any good DPS dealer in World in Warcraft, um, if you die, you blame your healer. And well, the Shadow Hunter did not heal that Blade Master. Keeper of the Grove now making its way back off to the North. Priestess of the Moon making its way off to the North. Here, are we going to see Alchemist? <clears throat> uh, Alchemist sitting at is Alchemist at six? No, not yet at six. And at, at this point, if the Alchemist gets to six, he could buy potions of mana and then just constantly use it, use it on a Grunt or a Kodo, and and then uh, like net himself um, gold. And that's one of the one of the well money making schemes of the uh, of the alchemist right there as we're going to take a look at the alchemist now in that front line alchemist 1250 hit points rings of protection would be absolutely absolutely powerful on that alchemist when you have high hit points and low armor well adding armor and um, could make a very big impact there as we see the priestess of the moon just throwing down all of that healing spray lightning shield now also being thrown down here tranquility could be cast again I, um, the, well the cooldown on it is extremely low as you see uh, there you go again tranquility on that keeper of the grove keeping all of the units alive healing spray coupled with tranquility keeping all of the units alive even though there is lightning shield damage going across pretty much everywhere Keeper of the Grove's Tranquility should be coming to an end. There it goes. But so much damage was mitigated as we may see the... Well, no, Blade Master finally gets a heal from that Shadow Hunter. Healing Wards are in the back as well. The Blade Master should actually be backing up a little bit to try and get a little bit more Healing Ward and um, heals on this army in that fight. Alchemist in that front line. And it looks like Soen will be able to hold his... Serpent wards are going to have a big impact. Grunts, all right, let's take a look. A couple of additional lightning shields I thought went down. Did they go down? Um... Oh, the, this tree of eternity actually teleported down to the south here. No, no additional lightning shields. Foggy's army down to 41 supply after that battle. And this is still absolutely crazy. The healing wards, and it's going to be the casters of the orc army making that big impact. Normally, normally the orc army has a difficult time trying to heal. But with troll witch doctors at mastery training, you have access to that all-important healing ward, keeping all of your units alive coming back through a tree of eternity is going to be trying to entangle that gold mine if foggy ultimately is going to mine from four bases to so wins two and the economy and playing this macro game could be enough alchemist would be such a great finance minister well, yes I, I don't know wouldn't that cause inflation um right like just printing of money does absolutely no good as v v the value of or the cost of all of those individual items would then go up relative to the amount of money in circulation. Spoken like someone who has an MBA. Anyways, Kodo Beast now coming across here. Blade Master, Mirror Image now making their way down, trying to make its way back onto the side here, getting in a little bit of damage pretty easily as the Blade Master now trying to dive on through. Okay, Blade Master going to go ahead and back up once again. Blade Master, however, not going to repeat the same mistake twice, diving in a bit too far. No potion of lesser invulnerability on the Blade Master, though. That could be an easy way for him to dive in there, Blade Storm, and then still be able to make its way back out. Serpent Wards, Healing Wards are in the back be able to come out a little bit ahead here foggy finally getting the supply advantage again but the units are coming in from the far side let's take a look back over here no more mining so this is the battle to be had alchemist everything blade master shows up to the party damage cutting through They're trying to deal so much damage right there blade master is actually a giant pin cushion once again as the unit trying to get away there's the entangle and it survives it survives because of a healing ward sitting right there shadow hunter finally gets a healing wave off there a tree of life joins in on the fight and that blade master saw his life a flash before his eyes there was an arrow coming for his head and it would have killed him if it wasn't for the healing wards all right blade master now trying to finish off some more of those units that was a split second game of second differences as the serpent wards are going to pelt down this tree of eternity and well pretty much take away any any advantage or momentum that foggy was hoping to build
Oh, so, and are we going to be building up another expansion here? Serpent, the healing wards, really making a profound difference in this matchup. The Witch Doctor is pretty much, um, after years of neglect, uh, and of just neglect not being used in Professional Warcraft 3, um, and then finally being used for what, what Watcher wards, sentry wards and now finally being used for stasis traps and healing wards after all that time a 304 critical strike um blade master uh, yeah he's not even in that 100 damage range there's kodo beast is out over here but there isn't that many keeper the, or uh, that many items all right gonna go ahead and try and engage again blade master is here ready to go the in comes the fight kodo beast is a major major damage um, boost for the entire army and it is going to try and hide as best as it can blade master now going after those back units 268 critical strike going after units again there goes another kodo beast once more healing wards are being dropped down and well the serpent wards are still eating through many of these units 35 supply compared to 37 level 8 shadow hunter with brilliance aura shadow hunter and how did i miss that the shadow hunter had brilliance or a blade master well has blood Bloodlust, bloodlusted, um, bloodlusted um, orc army, and the fact that the shadow hunter has brilliance aura is giving extra mana to the witch doctors and the shaman as well. Down across over here, the great hall is going to end up getting canceled, but um, 24 supplied to 33. Blade master, are we going to see the cancellation? There you are. Blade master shows up to the party. No orb of lightning. Shadow hunter. There's the quick hex. Finally, after so long, staff of preservation saves. Going after that alchemist. There, alchemist sitting at level six alchemist does have um well it has transmute and there is that quick quick damage again blade master trying to get in front not working out how is that alchemist so fast even in hex mode as the blade master unable to catch up blade master not wearing boots of speed while the alchemist is not even using chemical rage all right making its rounds again the rest of the orc army is just saying i am far too slow to really do any sort of catching up all right alchemist coming back in the front again however the shadow hunter is going to be right there ready to go you're going to see this one alchemist come on cast bloodlust on your blade master there's a purge right there as the alchemist blade master going to show up in front again but does well unfortunately gets back out again all right staff of preservation priestess of the moon says you know what now time to chase me um like what no i'm not gonna make any comments like <laughs> not gonna make any comment there keeper of the grove now making its way back down the entire expansion or the entire main base pretty much um um, open nothing really going on keeper of the grove making its way back down um meanwhile units are and making their way back off to the north blade master going after this tree of life no gold mining here no gold mining here there is only one place that you can mine gold on the map and no one is mining gold from there at all foggy gonna end up losing this tree of life here meanwhile the keeper of the grove bringing uh, bringing uh, an army of trees to the fight here to take down the fortress as the blade master finishes off that tree of life there all right are we gonna end up having a reveal Okay, I believe every single uh, every single home building of the of the night elf army has been taken down. Yep, remaining two minutes remaining in order to be revealed right now as the keeper of the grove now making its way back out. Let's take a look at this. Alchemist is surrounded, and we're waiting for a unit to go ahead and try and staff in preservation. There's a healing spray. It's gonna end up getting taken down as well. And well, nope. There is the staff of preservation. Purge onto the keeper of the grove. Blade master now going after it. Are we gonna see another staff of preservation? yep there you go only to now see that the priestess of the moon is in trouble gonna try and get in front of it there's the wind walk priestess of the moon trying to shake away and this is not going to work out 248 critical strike onto the priestess of the moon as it gets taken down level eight blade master level eight shadow hunter and that blade master really making his presence known after all that time not being able to take down that blade master right there during that moment and that was the big big impact all right blade master going after perhaps going to finish off some of these ends here purge quickly finishing them off shadow hunter still getting plenty of mana and this is what happens when the orc army gets brilliance aura they're able to do so much more with their casters Good uh, greetings from Manchester. Um, Greater Manchester. <laughs> 
All right, let's take a look. Force of Nature, thank you for tuning in all the way. Sick game, definitely to be considered a recommended. Yeah, I definitely think so. It really is a game of seconds. I've talked about it in other videos. You're just trying to get a second advantage over your opponent, hoping that that one second advantage makes a big difference. And in this game, we saw the Blade Master being able to blade storm get healing get staying alive just long enough to well get back into that game blade master gonna go ahead and engage go after all of these units once more level eight blade master going after two level six heroes right now and we're gonna see a well now joining in on the fight once more blade master going after some of those units shaman could easily just purge down those units again there's an acid bomb oh no that was not an acid bomb that was a transmutation going after a shaman right there staff of preservation saves the unit but i have no idea where it teleports it to when there are what nope there is a tree of life somewhere it says there's a tree of life I, I don't I don't see where there's a tree of life. So, but I guess he has revealed Blade Master now going after the Keeper of the Grove. If we are taking a look, yes, another hex going down right there. Keeper of the Grove trying to run away. It looks like a staff of preservation from the Alchemist. They're going into that Sea of Moonwells. Alchemist is going to be in trouble. Is he going to be able to make his way back out? More damage coming across. Blade Master wind walks through, getting in some damage. Moonwell staff of preservation moves to the other side, trying to chase after all of that. It's finally gone, and one more death to seal the deal, and Fo Foggy loses to Soin in a game, well, in a 40-minute marathon game. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It was an absolute, absolute blast to watch that game with you guys. Definitely leave comments below. Tell me what you thought. Remember to like and thumbs up the video for all of you guys on YouTube, and, and I hope to see you guys on Battle.net.